everyone, it's Claire. Um, today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on pastel pencils. Quite a few of you have been asking me um, to do this piece for a little while. So I had a little bit of time today and thought that I would make this video for you all. What you can see in front of you is a finished double spread of mine from Joanna Bassford's wonderful Ivy and the Inky Butterfly. The actual design itself, so the, the flowers and the toadstools, the tree and house mouse and ivy, they're all Prismacolor pencils, but the background is pastel pencils. And I'm going to firstly show you how you can colour in small areas with pastel pencils, but then the main part of the tutorial is going to be on how to um, recreate this background. Now clearly we won't be doing the whole thing, I'll just be kind of showing you the principles of how to get from dark green and blend through to dark blue and um, but that's the plan for today so let's get started what I want to talk to you about first is kit so you can see various pieces of equipment in front of you I've got I'm using Karen Dash uh, pastel pencils today there are many brands and to be honest, I've used um, Derwent pastel pencils and I've used a couple of other pastel pencils as well. And in so much as you can get a variation in quality in coloured pencils, I don't actually think that variation in quality is as noticeable in pastel pencils. So don't feel like you have to have um, high end pastel pencils to be able to make um, a good job of what you're doing. That's not the case at all. Then I have a pastel pencil sharpener. Now, I'm going to be really honest with you, I don't know what the difference is between a normal pencil sharpener and a pastel pencil sharpener. This one's a, you can see it's a Derwent. Um, I suspect it's probably something to do with the blade. So I suspect the, the steel blade is probably a little bit softer to accommodate for the, uh, the, the softer pastel inners of the pencils. Then I've just got my Tombow Mono Eraser. Then what you can see is... Um, a variety of blending equipment, so pastel blending equipment. These items here, these paper cone shaped items are stomps, paper stomps, and you can use them to, they're, they're kind of an old style blending tool for pastels, either pastel pencils or pastel sticks. Personally, with what I'm going to show you next, I think they've had their day. Um, I know a lot of people still use them, they're absolutely fine to use, they do the job. I just now think we've got some better kit here, which I'm going to talk about in a moment. If you're going to use stomps, um, you will need some of this, which is literally just very, very fine grade um, sandpaper. And you can pick that up from your local DIY store. And basically you just use that to, to clean off your stump. Now then these, let me just move these out of the way a little bit. Sorry, and I should have said the stomps come in various sizes, so you can see I've got a, I've got a, um, a variety of sizes out there for you, so that you can see that they will do various levels of detail for you. Now then, these are silicon tipped, and they're colour shapers, colour shaping tools. So basically, um, they're silicon rubber at the end, and I use these to blend my pastels because I just think they're. For me, they're better than the stomps in that they clean off quicker um, and you've, you've you've got more control of them because you're using them um, directly like a brush than you would kind of um, a stomp in a, in a pencil kind of a way. So that's what I'm going to be blending with today. So, that's enough about kit. I'm going to move everything out the way. And what we're going to start with is, so I'm just going to my spare copy of Ivy. Take the markers out of my book. And what we're going to do is, I'm just going to quickly show you how you can use um, pastel pencils for, for detail first. So I'm going to zoom in because we're going to be doing a couple of segments of um, one of these daisies. So I'm just going to zoom in so you'll be able to see better. And I'm going to try and do this big daisy here. So I'm going to make sure that you can see that. There we go. Now, what I've got is, I've got three um, pink 
pastel pencils picked out. So I've got a magenta, I've got a deep pink and I've got a light pink. Now, what was puzzling me earlier was when I was looking at um, what colours these pastel pencils were, it was confusing me a little bit because on some of them the colours are given and then on some of them they're not, which is really odd. So they've all got a colour number. So they've all got a colour number on the end, which you can see, but then some of them, see that one hasn't got a written colour on it, whereas this hot pink says purplish red. So I'm, I'm not entirely sure why some of them don't have um, the colours actually written on them, and some of them do, but anyway, um, the principle will be exactly the same no matter what colours you choose. So all I've got is a dark mid and a light of a palette shade. That's all you need to, to kind of worry about, really. Now what we're going to do is, um, we're going to start with the deepest shade. So I'm going to go into the inside of this segment here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to gently mark out, and I'm hardly putting any pressure on the page, just gently mark out where I want that colour to stop. So in a little bit, a little bit the same way as we would blend with Prismacolor pencils. Then everything behind that, I'm going to do in a firmer hand. Okay? Then I'm going to take my mid pink and I'm going to do the same, just lightly mark out there and then firmer over the previous blend line and up to the blend line in that colour. So I'm still leaving this portion here in a light touch. And then I'm going to go to my lightest pink and take that in a firm hand over that blend line and up to the end of that segment. Okay, I'm going to give that a quick blow. And then all we do, because we're working in a small area, is I'm going to take the smallest of my silicon tipped um, colour shapers. And all I'm going to do is, I'm going to carefully just swipe over and I'm going to make sure that I go from light to dark. So I'm going to swipe in this direction, because otherwise you will just obliterate the, the lighter colour with the darker shade. So if I was swiping in that direction, I'd be doing myself no favours at all. So just medium pressure, I'm going to pull this way and you can see just work my way down to the stem and don't don't be tempted to go back up once you've been over here because you've got a lot deeper pigment on the end of that rubber tip so if you wanted to blend some more at the other end just give it a quick rub and then go back there like that so we'll quickly do that again so mark myself out a line of the deepest colour my hand, mid colour, light touch, firmer over the previous blend line, lightest colour, firmer over that blend line and take it to the end of the segment. <laughs> like that. Quick blow, silicon, start at this end in the light and just blend away in that direction like that okay so basically that's how you can use pastel pencils in small areas now what I'm going to um, show you is how I achieved and I'll just grab my book again so I'm going to show you how I achieved the gradation in pastel pencils for this background from um, the dark green to the blue I'm not actually going to be using a piece in the book for this I thought it would be better to demonstrate it on um, just a plain sheet of paper. So, again, I have my pastel pencils and I'm just going to lay them out in order because I want to explain why I've got them in this order. So, can you see all of those? Yes, you can. So, what I wanted to do for that piece was have very very simply grass at the bottom and sky at the top and I knew that where the undergrowth was at the bottom of the page that it would be a deeper green and that at the top of the page where the the, the hue of the sky was the deepest it would be a deep blue so if you just took a green and a blue they're going to be quite hard to blend together because they're they're then they're further apart on the color scale so what we do is we pick a range of colours and the most important thing is that where blue meets green 
They're very, very past, very, very pastel-y, she says, for pastel pencils. You knew what I meant. Um, that they're very kind of pastel light tones. So you can, you can, if I just move these out the way, I've got three blue, three green. This is my lightest blue, this is my lightest green. Now you can see that there's hardly any difference in those two colour pencils, which is exactly what I want, because when the grass turns to sky, I don't want it to be a massive colour variation. What I want it is to seep from blue, sorry, from green through to blue very, very gently, which is why I've picked out this range of colours. Again, confusingly, some of them have colours written on them, um, some of them don't, but I guess um, it's not that important because you can clearly see what I've picked out to do the job that I'm doing. So you would just need to follow that same principle. It doesn't matter what colours you use. So what I'm going to do is, and I'm going to take my largest silicon um, colour shaper for this. So I'm going to start off and all I'm going to do is I'm going to do you a strip up here. So we'll start around here. And like before, I'm just going to mark myself out, perhaps like an inch or so wide, just lightly, my deepest shade of green. And then behind it, I'm going to press more firmly. Okay, and then I'm going to go to my next green. So again, up here, just lightly. And then more firmly over this blend line and up to that blend line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend as I go. So I'm not going to do the whole colour first. I'm going to blend as I go. Just give that a gentle blow. So I've got, I'm going to use the flat end of this silicon um, brush. And again, I'm going to pull from dark to, sorry, this time I'm going to pull from um, dark to light. So I'm just going to pull up over like that. and just pull that dark into the light. I'm just gonna brush that off like that. Because in this instance, you want that deeper shade to go a bit further up, so we're pulling in the opposite direction. Like that. And then what I'm gonna go back and do is just lightly, and you can do this, you can, you can layer up pastel pencils as many times as you want. I'm just gonna gently put some more of that deepest colour in like that and then just pull it up over like that. So you can already see that we've got a gradation in the colour. So I'm going to go to my next green which is almost kind of like a pale sage colour. Again, gently mark myself out a line, firm over that blend line and then firm up to the light blend line. So I've I've left this strip in the in the lighter touch. Same principle. I'm just gonna pull like that. Just rub my finger over there so we don't get the outline of the brush strokes. Wipe it on the cloth. I'm gonna go back to my previous green, just darken this little bit up. <laughs> Quick blow. There we go. And you can smooth it out with your finger a little bit as well. Okay, so I'm going to go to my lightest green, which I think in terms of Prismacolor pencils is kind of the equivalent of a grey-green light. So now you can get the principle of where you would have this deeper green at the bottom of the page where you would be in shade in the undergrowth and then you're gradually getting lighter in green as you want to turn to the blue of the sky. Just pulling that colour up. Pulling it up. Okay. Now I'm going to go to my lightest blue. And this is where you will find that picking colours that are very, very light shades, when you make a colour change, really pays dividends. Because if you were trying to blend a deep shade of each colour, whilst it would blend, it wouldn't be as seamless. So I'm just going to wipe the end of my brush, because I had green on it. 
And this is why I think you can see it's better than using stumps because you would have to kind of keep cleaning your stumps off on that paper where this just rubs off with, with a, a really simple single swipe onto a cloth. And can you see that? Because those two colours are so close in terms of the lightness of their shade, we can very, very easily blend green into blue. My next blue. And say I had these eight pencils. What is a good tip is to measure out eight equal strips on your page. So say your page was, I don't know, um, 24 centimetres in height. <laughs> Each of these bands I would do in three centimetres, because obviously eight threes are 24. So you just get an equal amount of the colours. I'm just going to go back to my lightest blue. Just lighten that up a tiny bit. And pull it up. Like that. So I'm going to my second darkest blue. Little blend line. that's a little bit more of a colour jump I'm just gonna smooth it off with my finger like that look how good that is final blue so this would be at your top of your page I don't have to mark myself out a blend line because it would be at the top <laughs> pull it up I'm just going to pull that up with my finger like that. Now you can see that if you use your fingers, you can actually grade out and fade out the, the pastel, which is what I did for this piece. So you can see that around the text, I've faded it out even more. And that's really easily achieved by just literally pulling the colour out like that towards the text and pastels are very forgiving so if you felt like you'd gone too far I'm just going to pick a, an eraser if you felt like you'd gone too far they just rub off the page really really easily so hopefully that's been really useful um, I will be trying to make another tutorial on watercolour pencils shortly in terms of pastel pencils if you have any questions, as usual, drop me a line on the YouTube channel and you can also get me on Facebook. Bye for now, guys.